Now one of the stumbling blocks that pilots run into after a new autopilot installation is programming the GPSS steering system with the existing GPS navigator. As long as you understand a few basic concepts, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Now the first concept you'll need to understand is that most analog autopilots just aren't smart enough to decipher the high-speed digital signal that's outputted from the GPS. This signal is converted to something the autopilot does understand, sort of fooling it. The signal is converted to a heading signal and then fed to the autopilot's heading channel. And this is the reason for placing the autopilot in heading mode when you want the GPSS to do the flying. In this example, we're using the Aspen EFD-1000 primary flight display, which has GPSS steering built into its feature set, but other GPSS systems work the same way. Now the first step is to lock and load the data you want the GPSS steering to fly. Now a huge advantage is getting the boxes set up before departure. So here we are going to White Plains, New York. It's a standard IFR routing out of Hartford. It's direct to the Hartford VOR, then Madison, then Bridgeport, Rhymes Intersection, and then to the White Plains Airport. So we've got our active flight plan programmed. First stop is Hartford VOR. Our CDI is in GPS mode, which means we're outputting GPS as data to our autopilot. Once we're airborne and cleared on course, we engage our autopilot in heading mode and engage our GPSS steering. Now it's important to have a thorough understanding of the autopilot interface in any airplane you fly, so make sure you work it all out before you get airborne. With your avionics tip of the month, I'm Larry Anglesano. Thanks for watching.